Ah, all right, making a video. Another one, that's right. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, conference report. Um, I think I'll do that video now. Yeah, okay, I think so. Um, we did a couple of videos on the general subject of um, life, um, pain, suffering, survival. And so that's sort of the theme I got out of it was the survival word and how that's the premium. Um, you know, the people who have survived throughout history have been the people willing to, you know, eat the shit to take it. You know, no matter how life served it up, they were willing to take it, you know, as it, uh, it, you know, in any form, any kind of gruel to get by, because the premium was always this survival thing. Um, yeah, and reproduction. You survive to reproduce, to take care of your kids, to fulfill that obligation. And that's always sort of been the prime directive that sits out there, this sort of the DNA model. Um, but he sort of applied, implied, like many people do, that survival is what animals out in the wild are doing. Like they're having the same, uh, implying sort of like they have the same deliberation in doing it. We know the consequences of sex. We know that that creates a child, okay? <laughs> animals don't. Um, they are not trying to reproduce. They're not trying to survive. They're just trying to stay comfortable. They're just trying to avoid suffering. They don't know they can kill themselves. They don't know of the possibility of killing themselves. Um, but they're still going to have the same problem that we're going to encounter in doing it, in the sense that as soon as you enter this world, you become attached to things. You know, material things, chair, my chair, mine now anyway, was somebody else's, but now it's my chair. Um, but you would come become attached to people, and uh, you 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 make promises um, overtly and subtly uh, to those other people, and uh, a sense of obligation starts controlling some percentage of your life, and that obligation is going to require you to survive. You can't fulfill the obligation if you're dead. You can only fulfill it if you're alive, and so that becomes part of the psychology. So any of you personally have incentive to say, yeah, I've had enough of this shit, there's going to be little pieces of life that are going to kind of compel you to make further investment. And so he was sort of talking also about the um, pain-pleasure mechanisms and how we're, um, you know, how pain is this defensive thing, you know, like this suffering thing, that yes, the, 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 the short term is, is a negative, in, in that, you know, you, you encounter, or you feel some sort of negative sensation, um, like burning your hand or something. Um, but the positive is your long-term survival in the f sense that the, the short-term pain will keep you from doing further damage or protect you from infe infection or, or, you know, if you have a, an injury, it'll prevent you from, you know, the limp will prevent you from doing more damage. And so then again, the, the prime directive is the survival thing and quality of life or conscious experience will be compromised to maximize or produce the survival end game, um, the durability. And, uh, you know, it just seems obvious that, yes, we're all a product of people who were durable. I mean, it had to be very, every one of our ancestors, for each one of us, you know, you can link to people who survived the plague and survived. They sur they were the survivors. They weren't the ones that died. They were the ones that survived everything. Um, every every calamity that has taken place on planet Earth for, you know, two or three billion years, your ancestors survived. They were the ones that lived. Um, and so that's your heritage. And uh, that's going to be part of your identity and part of how your your makeup and so it's even though well, we now have this capacity you know that we've gained in the last few thousand years to um, understand the consequences of how we live what you know the real product of the that yes the product of sex is a child you know through the fertilization of an egg uh, we understand that mechanics and we understand what death is now and like all the other animals we know that it's this permanent condition where what you were this arrangement of neurology and experience is lost um, and you know that's it the end 
of your conscious identity, your functionality. The machine no longer works. Um, blood is no longer pumped into your brain. Um, you're dead. You're gone. <laughs> you don't exist anymore. Um, the memory is erased. The hard drive is destroyed. That was you. Um, and so, yeah, that we have that advantage that we can know how the game works, how the game is played. We can see the mechanism where before we all we could be as part of all, all we could be is inside the spinning wheel and all we knew is if we stop running <coughs> you know the wheel is going to throw us upside down and spin us around and we really didn't we just didn't have any capacity to understand that we can step out of the wheel that there's a there's a you just migrate out of it you don't have to stay in the game and so we can make a more conscious choice but then we're still stuck with this dilemma where as organisms we become attached to the life we're living attached to the people in it we become obligated and then on top of that we still have to overcome that barrier where our body instinct is to protect itself where it has a defense mechanism that says do no harm um, avoid suffering avoid something that's physically damaging I mean we're we're built not to damage ourselves physically to prevent physical damage to avoid it because that's how you you do survive billions of years is you have to have some mechanism where you just don't accidentally fall off cliffs and you know walk up to the tyrannosaurus and kick him in the nuts or some other kind of stupid thing that'll get you killed or stomped or, or wiped out so anyway that would be just the context that that would be what I would add to the conversation is this that there is this conflict between this this grandiose notion this this engrandized term of survival, which can't be accomplished anyway. You will not survive life. Life will kill you. And uh, all you'll really end up doing, it, you know, is playing the game, is you'll probably end up, if you're like the average human being, um, yeah, forcing some new generation to take your place and play the same stupid game over again. And uh, over again and over again and over again. But you won't survive in the end anyway. You're only going to buy something as meaningless as time. And I say meaningless just in the context of all the other consciousness that exists. I mean, what's, what's the difference? I mean, what's, what would be the difference if the number of humans was always stayed the same? If, the, if, if reproduction could take place in a 45-day life, what would be the difference effectively? of living 45 days and then dying. I mean, it would just mean that you have, you, you do the recycling part, you do the begin and end part more often. But otherwise, nothing would change substantially. And so if you live to be 200 years, you're still, it's still the same game. It's still the beginning. All you do is change how much time there is between the beginning and the end. But um, it's still, it's all just about how, what number of consciousnesses exist um, what their names are and who their identity is is sort of meaningless. I mean, the fact that it's you or it's me doesn't really matter. I mean, the, the point is it's a somebody. And all the somebodies are just as substantial as each other. I mean, I know you think you're special, but you're not. You're just one in seven billion human organisms um, that are having this conscious experience. Um, <clears throat> it's really just quite stupid to keep playing a game like this. It doesn't go anywhere. You won't achieve this notion, this idea of survival will not take place. So you can't achieve the goal. So why waste time investing in that? And instead, and, and at the expense of compromising quality, and that, that's the whole point I really wanted to get to, because he was sort of describing a life that was really, really hard. That There was a huge amount of suffering and an unpleasantness that had to be endured to buy that life and why would it be continued and my argument isn't so much about continuing it's about perpetuating because we can't do much about being caught up in it when we're in it and when we're <laughs> when we're addicted all we can do is prevent the next addict all we can do is stop somebody else from being stuck chasing um, a, 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 a dragon they're never going to catch anyway yeah, that's probably enough of a video and such. Oh yeah, and I wanted to mention, I just forgot to mention in the what the fuck, I'll put this on YouTube, I don't think I'm over 15 minutes, so 
Um, yeah, there was that guy, um, don't remember his name, but, you know, and then that other guy, the Stodals guy, you know, got his password and deleted all his videos and all that kind of crap, and YouTube really ought to fix this shit, and it's just complete bullshit, and so they hopefully will restore his account, and this, I guess there's nothing YouTube can do, but they really, Stodals is, you know, he's a, you know, he's gotten more than three strikes, I mean, this guy keeps fucking up every time he opens an account, he fucks somebody up somewhere, and it's kind of bullshit that he keeps being allowed to, um, make a new account, make a new account, make a new account, I mean, just kind of bullshit, yeah, so I guess that's all you can say about it, I mean, it's not YouTube's fault, there's assholes in the world, I suppose, but yeah, they could have some mechanism where you actually allow them to email, so maybe somebody who's got a partnered account who actually gets to email YouTube and get a response now and then, maybe one of you should actually send an email to YouTube informing them that this guy has had his account ruined by um, you know, an asshole who didn't have authorization to delete his videos and such. Yeah. Maybe you could do that. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm taking the easy road. Yeah, I'm just saying somebody else fix it. All right. Anyway, never mind. Um, so that's it. Until next time, blah, 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 and such, and so forth.